Morale is a tricky thing. It evaporates in the boredom of inactivity, but it expands in the hearts and minds of laughing servicemen. I know about that myself. When I was a young man about Cleveland with no Crosby to feed me gags, it wasn't so easy to get into trouble. We had to go out looking for excitement and something that wasn't nailed down. Of course, we never found any crown jewels in Cuyahoga County, but we did find trouble. That's what boredom did to us. The police are still wondering who stole those apples back in 1920. Seriously, the morale of this nation's Army, Navy, and Marine Corps is the problem of one lively lad multiplied by several million. You know, during the war, our boys in uniform were in every country in the world and on every ocean. They were in the hardest places to get to and in the biggest cities. Keeping up their spirit was a tremendous job, which for more than five years, in large part, rested in the hands of a volunteer group, the USO. This organization was created by the six great welfare agencies representing all faiths and joined together for the first time in our history in a continuing effort for the nation's well-being. The United States government gave the USO the duty of serving the boys in our armed forces. To do this, the USO set up 3,000 clubs, lounges, mobile units, and other operations. At one time, more than 700 shows a day were being given in India, across two oceans in France and Germany, from Alaska to Brazil, and from Newfoundland to the South Pacific. More than $200 million was contributed by the American public for this work and has been spent in a business-like manner. The Army and the Navy, at the suggestion of General Eisenhower and Admiral Nimitz, backed by President Truman, have asked that this great service continue in order to help in the dangerous and difficult transition to final peace. The USO said, yes, we'll continue through 1947, but first we'll have to consult Mr. and Mrs. American public, show them what we've been doing, and ask for the money to finish the job. Imagine the scope of the USO. Here's our little gang down in the South Pacific. How do you like those outfits? Ah, it's better than wearing the regular pajamas. I don't want to give you the impression that I was the whole USO. They wouldn't let me. And the records show that there were 6,000 other camp show entertainers. And as for helping the boys and girls in the service, 1,500,000 volunteered in a thousand different ways to bring them a home away from home. No book can tell the whole story, neither can a few pictures. I can only ask you to imagine how our forces felt when a little bit of the United States was brought halfway around the world to them. They joked and laughed and rested. It made you feel good to see them. They were all at ease in the civilian sense. I want you to take a look at a few of the spots where this USO magic paid off. Take this stranger in a strange land on leave in a city where the pavement is twice as hard as it was at home. The streets have no ends, no faces familiar. People pass and look through you as if you weren't there. This GI knows what it feels like. If he walked fast, he'd get nowhere faster. That is, if he didn't get to one of the hundreds of USO clubs. They've often been called a home away from home where he can do the familiar things. He can telephone if he wants to. He can read if he desires. Dear Mom, he writes, or Darling, this is the best chance I've had in a week to tell you. So now she has it in writing, too. Then there's the council of the church when he wants it. Your boys get advice on their problems or answers to bothersome questions. Whatever your faith, Jewish, Protestant, or Catholic, each USO club provides a selection of religious publications. There is a place for the boys to get instruction and practice in the arts and crafts. Indoor athletes have their choice of putting topspin on a ping pong ball. Dancing through an evening with gals who can make a guy feel at home and can really dance. Or making a stout try with elbow, fang, and straw at the snack bar where there's always a gang and plenty of hot dogs, homemade cookies, pies, and such. Yes, the USO gives you a lot at their clubs and they help you on the move or getting back to camp. Take a lounge in a railroad station. Must be showing a Crosby picture there. It's hours till train time and a guy needs some shut eye. He can pound his ear up to the last minute, catching up on snores or getting ahead on dreams. Dead sure the USO girl will say when rough enough to break it up. When the shooting war stopped, needs for USO services changed. Some programs were dropped. Others more vitally needed were built up. New troops in training felt useless with no war to win. Morale sagged. General Eisenhower was thinking about that when he visited USO clubs in the Philippines. 
You don't serve in two wars without knowing what happens to an American civilian army when the fighting ends. General Ike put it this way. Throughout this next year, there will be over a million men in the army, most of them far from the home community. The routine of non-combat duty makes the USO as vital to the morale and well-being of the soldier as it has ever been. These boys, like most of those who got Pacific duty, went through the Honolulu USO Victory Club, a former department store that in one month served a crop of 447,000 Americans in uniform. This club had everything. There were women to sew for you. They would mend a rip, anchor a button, or in many cases, tack on that brand new stripe to show you'd been promoted. And if a guy was halfway handy with an iron, he could smooth out his own patch or put a crease in his own pants. If he could only cook. And look at this, make a skirt. It's not a bad idea at that. Now that soldiers and sailors have more leave, they like to see the sight. So USO runs rubberneck tours to points of special interest. In Hawaii, it has to be up a mountain. Here's where they tell you the wind blows so steadily inland you can throw out a dollar bill and have it blown back at you. They tell you that. I know it's a rumor from a finance company over there. Think of these trusting boys, throwing away all that money and still waiting for it to come back. It's like my last visit to Santa Anita. Now, here's a USO camp show troop just pulling in by truck. That's something I know about personally because I traveled plenty of miles with them. The way those hard-working kids shipped all over the world to put on the best show they could under terrible conditions was wonderful. Stages were thrown together when there was a stage. Tired, battle-dirty soldiers came early to get a seat or stood in the rain just to get a laugh or enjoy a song. Entertainers gave everything they had and wished they had more to give. Those American servicemen were the greatest audiences, bar none, that we show people ever had. Take the old handkerchief trick. Those boys knew tricks of their own, tricks of jungle fighting that meant life or death. But this little stunt of the handkerchief that could be knotted and untie itself fascinated them. Most of the big names of Hollywood and Broadway were in their pitching. There was Joey Brown, who played towns and jungles, too. Marlena Dietrich spent many months overseas and talked personally to hundreds of GIs. Beautiful Ingrid Bergman snatched time between pictures to show up in person in Berlin and elsewhere. Frances Langford sang her heart out while we did many thousands of miles together. Jack Benny and Larry Adler did their stuff. Yehudi Menuhin brought his violin. Lily Pond sang for big and little groups. And it was only a few days after Japan surrendered that the boys of the Occupation Army heard this announcement. The 8th Army Special Service is very happy to present the first USO show in Japan. The Danny K. Leo DeRocha Show, and here is your star of stage, screen, and radio, Danny K. <laughs> Anybody here from Brooklyn this afternoon? Yeah. Oh, so I'm very happy to see you. <laughs> yes, USO camp shows took laughter around the world. But right now, and for some years to come, there's a narrower world where USO has a job to do in 1947. I've seen this world, too. It's as narrow as a high hospital bed, and it imprisons thousands of American wounded. A girl playing an accordion can push the walls back a little. There are 156 Army, Navy, and Veterans Hospitals in the United States where men like these are waiting for USO camp shows. How they love these shows. Every girl in this chorus is greater than Pablo ever was. To boys who watch them from stretchers, wheelchairs, beds, and crutches. All Americans must speak out to these boys saying, as these USO girls say with their dance, and by simply being there, you are not forgotten. The USO will continue in 1947, not only for these men still in hospitals, but also for others here in this country and overseas, still serving the USA, still needing the USO. Your share, though contributed impersonally in dollars and checks, is transformed by the USO into an unforgettable service. I don't say you must give until it hurts. I say give until it wouldn't hurt you to look a bedridden veteran in the eye.